Hey friend, welcome to the Bible Track Echoes radio broadcast. I greatly appreciate the fact that you would invest a few moments of your time in this program. I'm excited about our topic for today because I believe it will be a help to a small segment of the population under the sound of my voice right now. I'll be honest with you, this topic, the theme, the thought for today, it won't be for everyone at this moment. But there will be some people listening right now for whom what we speak about could be a difference maker for them. We're looking at our latest newsletter. We titled it Overflowing because we are overflowing with the goodness of God. But right smack dab in the middle of this newsletter, we featured a gospel track that I'd like to tell you about today. I mentioned it could be a difference maker, and it truly and honestly really could. It's called, Thank You for Your Kindness at the Loss of My Loved One. Thank you for your kindness at the loss of my loved one. I I told you that this gospel tract and this this topic, this theme for today, isn't going to be for every single person listening right now. But you know it said, and it sounds so discouraging, but honestly it is true that You are either going into a storm, in a storm, or coming out of a storm. My prayer is that you have the right commander, have the right master of your ship with you, that you have Jesus Christ as the the helmsman of your boat. Because if you're in a storm, you need to make sure Jesus is in your boat. But beyond that, I'm going to ask you, to listen intently as I share with you this gospel tract that we featured. Here's what I said about this gospel tract in the newsletter. There may not be a more tender or timely tract than this one. We know God often does his most remarkable work in some of the most challenging circumstances. Time does not allow us to share the impact that has been made when grieving Christians though heartbroken over the loss of a dear family member or friend, have offered this gospel tract to spiritually lost attendees at a funeral or a graveside service. There is no better way to thank a friend for their care than by sharing the gospel with them. This resource, as always, free as the Lord provides, can be ordered at BibleTracksInc.org today, BibleTracksInc.org. We pray that you seldom need this tract, but it will it will be available when you do. Let me share this gospel tract with you. Maybe it's one that, after listening to it intently, maybe you lost someone, a dear family member or friend, and maybe it was some weeks, some months ago. I'll be honest with you, it's unlikely if it was only a few months ago that you've gotten over it yet. Maybe some years ago when there's still this this hole in your soul, it feels like. Don't be ashamed of that. Don't be bothered by that. But maybe one small way to provide just a glimpse of closure would be to take the Christian friend, for you to take this gospel tract, and maybe to put it inside of a note inside of a letter to some of the people that attended the funeral, some people that were very kind to you during the loss of your loved one. And maybe, just maybe, this could be a difference maker for someone that you know that doesn't know the Lord. Here's what this gospel track says. The title, Thank You for Your Kindness at the Loss of My Loved One. It begins, Please accept this little tract as a token of gratitude for your comfort and concern. Thank you for weeping with them that weep, as the Bible describes in Romans 12, 15. According to John 11, 35, even Jesus wept with those who wept because he understands sorrow. If you've ever lost a loved one, you understand my grief, loss, and loneliness. However, There is comfort and hope because of the promises of God, who is, Hebrews 4.15 says, touched with the feeling of our infirmities. There is a place called heaven. And hopefully you can say this, but this tract says, My loved one trusted Christ for salvation, and because of this is in heaven now, 
the Bible makes it clear that when one who puts their trust in Christ dies, he or she is absent from the body and present with the Lord. So it is that we know that we will be reunited someday. And it has been promised that in heaven he will wipe away all tears from our eyes. It has been said that there are two types of funerals. Those without hope and those with hope. This was a funeral for my loved one with hope. This hope can be yours in the face of any sorrow or fear. You can know that you will go immediately to God's heaven when you leave this world. Your loved ones can also have this hope. Do you wonder how we found this assurance? We found it in the person of Jesus Christ. He is the only one who can give you the assurance that you will go to heaven and meet your loved one again. He said of himself, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Christ is the way to the Father in heaven. Because he bore all of our sins when he was nailed to the cross, 1 Peter 2.24 says that he bare our sins in his own body on the tree. And says again in 1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh. Why did he do this, though? Because all of us are sinners. According to Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. God loves you. He wants you in heaven. He offers full and free forgiveness of sins when we receive his Son as our Lord and Savior, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians 1.7 And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. 1 John 5, 11 and 12. Would you receive him now as your Lord and Savior? Admit to him that you are a lost sinner who can do nothing to earn salvation. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Believe that he paid for your sins on the cross, was buried and rose again. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Then, by an act of your will, receive him as your Lord and Savior. If you receive him, you may claim his promise. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. If you were to read First Thessalonians 4, 13-18 carefully, you would learn that when our Lord returns, our loved ones who trusted in him will be raised from the dead. He will bring their spirit with him from heaven to enter their changed eternal bodies. And then we, we, then we which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. If you have still not received Christ as your Savior, please come to him now. In him is eternal life. He is the one who raised the little girl, the young man and Lazarus from the dead in the Bible. He overcame death when he rose from the grave, and he will raise from the grave those who trusted in him. 
He will bring to pass the truth that death is swallowed up in victory. Would you accept him as your Lord and Savior and receive the eternal life he offers? Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Come with your burden of sin and sorrow and fears to the one who said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11.28 We came to him, so we will not be separated forever. Whether through death or the Lord's return, we will be together in heaven with the Lord. May it be that you and your loved ones will join us too. Thank you again for your kindness. This gospel track can be not purchased, but can be gotten for free. Of course, you can donate towards the printing of these gospel tracks, but you can order them for free today at Bible Tracks Inc. Dot org, along with about 49 other titles. Tomorrow, on the broadcast, with only one day left, we have much to cover in this behind-the-scenes little excursion into our newsletter. Let me encourage you to consider coming to our grand opening. I would love to see you in person. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to shake your hand. I'd love to hear your stories of gospel tracts. I'd love to hear your memories of Dr. Paul Levine. If you're interested in coming to our grand opening, or you have more questions about how you can get our gospel tracts, how you can order gospel tracts like Thank You for Your Kindness, you can get a hold of us a myriad of different ways. The announcer at the conclusion of the broadcast in just a minute will let you know how to contact us, or you can contact me directly. If you'd like to know more about the grand opening on Saturday, October 1st from 1 to 5 p.m. Central Time here in Odell, Illinois, then text me directly. If you have questions about our ministry, a comment, a criticism even, a concern, text me directly at 309-316-7240. Again, that's 309 3 one six seven two four zero. My prayer today is simply this, that you have a great day for his glory. I don't know if you needed what we talked about today, or maybe you will need it sometime in the future when the loss of a loved one happens to your family. I don't pray it to be anytime soon, but can I tell you through the grief, through the pain, through the sorrow, there is one that gives true hope. His name is Jesus. Would you meet him today? God bless, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm Mike McCurry, and you're listening to the Bible Tracked Echoes radio broadcast. God bless.